Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show today. We have Dr. Matt Meisner joining us, and we're going to talk about some things coming up on this show season. We're going to talk about ringworm and warts and different things that can grow on the skin of cattle. Stay tuned after these messages to listen more from Dr. Meisner. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Matt, welcome to the show. Glad to be here again. Folks, this is Dr. Matt Meisner. He's an associate press professor here in our veterinary health center at Kansas State University where he uh, sees a lot of animals. He's one of our uh, medicine and surgery specialists here for beef cattle. Spend a lot of time down the clinics. Yeah. In fact, you managed to get me to come back here. <laughs> we kind of had to snag him away from a case, actually, leading right into what yeah. we're doing today. And we're going to talk about warts and ringworm, but we thought we'd start out by talking about some wart issues. And I didn't realize there's so many different types of warts. Yeah, I think that people researching these kind of things in cattle, we, we see everybody thinks, well, I got warts. And uh, but the, the research showing up to 15, 16 different strains of just bovine specific papilloma virus or or uh, types of virus that causes warts in cattle so <laughs> a lot of them and so they're not all created equal that's for sure and you're talking about you can get them all kinds of different places sure and so each of those strains generally have a specific area they like to grow in and uh, so you got a bunch of different skin types which we're we're used to seeing these big old giant uh, tumors looking on on cattle some that are specific for the reproductive tract, the penis on bulls, the, the reproductive areas on cows. Um, we've got areas that tend to like to form in the esophagus and the intestines, um, you name it. And so each of those strains kind of wants to go to a certain area. Okay. And, and then can you, I mean, obviously based on the placement of them, but then can you send them in and get diagnostics on them or things to that? Right. Uh, so, I mean, I think that um, it's pretty, when you see a wart, um, it's pretty predictable as to what it is. You know, we don't necessarily need a biopsy to prove that it's a wart. Um, what we see is sometimes more of the clinical problems with those types of things. And so, you know, the, they can get out of hand or they can cause uh, bleeding in certain areas, especially the reproductive tract that hinders uh, sterility in bulls if you've got blood in your, in your, uh, in your semen with that kind of thing. Um, so we don't really need to necessarily biopsy to prove it, um, but certainly there are some things that it could be, and so we occasionally we'll look at them and, and uh, maybe this wart is characteristic of some other type of a tumor, you know, and so we may want to, but most of the time warts are pretty predictable. You mentioned that these are caused by viruses, papillomavirus. And, and so it lends me, you know, we have pretty good vaccines against viruses. Can we have vaccines against warts? Yes, and there is uh, at least one licensed vaccine against warts. And when I mentioned there's so many different strains of that wart, uh, this vaccine tries to incorporate as many types as possible. And actually the company um, 
we'll solicit submissions from veterinarians or producers uh, to try to get more strains, okay? Um, so this is only one that does it, and it tries to encompass all of these, and so as vaccines would be, um, sometimes it's effective, sometimes it's not, but that's about the only way to, to truly get uh, some sort of immunity against the virus. And you said that's in Colorado? Well, the, the company is Colorado Serum Company, and I'd have to remember where it's from, but um, that's, that's the one vaccine that I know of. Cool. Well, many different types of warts. Best prevention is going to be a vaccine, Colorado Serum Company. We're going to come back a little bit and talk with Dr. Meisner about how we're going to treat cattle, how long it takes for, for the clinical signs to go away or for the warts to, to be gone. Uh, thanks for watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hello folks, Dr. Nels Lindbergh here with Production Animal Consultation and Animal Medical Center out of Great Bend, Kansas. Today's BQA Tip of the Day, we're thinking about handling our cows for this fall. Everyone's getting done with fall harvest and thinking about handling their cows and getting them preg checked, moving them off of grass onto whatever, whatever residues or pastures they may be moving them to. When we do those things, we think about stress on those cows and we want to do everything we can possibly do to minimize those stresses and so cattle handling, handling those cows is a very important thing to think about when we move them off pasture, gather them, move them to another pasture, move them to another residue or as we're bringing them in to get them preg checked. Um, we just want to do all we can to minimize hot shot use, cattle prod use, all those things and it's about positioning and anticipation and pressure and release and focal point on that eye and uh, we just have to do those things to do the right thing for the cattle, which our people demand that we do the best we can in terms of animal welfare. And there's nobody cares more about animal welfare than those of us doing it. So keep it forefront in your mind. Think about it, do it, and keep at it. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Still using ineffective fly tags on your cattle? It's time to eliminate fleas, ticks, flies, lice, and parasites, and at the same time, give them a shiny coat, making them more valuable. One fly tag can cost $2.50, but you can do this all for about a nickel a head. Introducing the Cow Sprayer, designed and built in the U.S. The Cow Sprayer is portable, solar-powered, and comes with a 25- or 40-gallon tank. Eliminate parasites for about five cents a head with the Cow Sprayer. Cowsprayer.com do your cattle struggle with pink eye, BRD, or another disease? Contact Newport Laboratories for a customized solution. Our custom-made vaccines are produced using the specific diseases found in your area. These USDA licensed vaccines offer potential cost savings on vaccine and labor. Contact your veterinarian or Newport Laboratories the next time your cattle are in need of a custom solution. Newport Laboratories custom made vaccine because every situation is different. This segment brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner. We're from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, where Dr. Meisner is an associate professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences, and he's also our section leader for our livestock services section. Yeah. Changed the name. Yeah, we did. No yeah. more ag practices now. <laughs> we got livestock services. But basically, he is an internal medicine specialist that sees a lot of cases here, a uh, lot of cattle coming through our clinic, specialty cases, regular cases, and we're talking about warts. So, you know, we get a calf in here and, you know, it's fair time or, or whatever, and someone comes in and says, oh, shoot, I got a wart I need to get rid of. What are we going to sure. do? And there's probably, I'd kind of to that, uh, there's several reasons that we'll see it. One would be show season, 4-H season, and warts on the skin are going to be one of those things that 
don't allow you to go into the fair because it is right. a, it is a virus. It is a contagious virus. It is one of those things that they don't want to to have there. Not only is it unsightly, um, but it's one thing. So that'd probably be one of the reasons we'd see it. And so if you think you've got warts or you know you've got some on these, you'd, you're wanting to plan ahead to get rid of them um, at least a month before you go. And and as we have for prevention, meaning a vaccine against the virus, um, the way that we treat these is to try to remove them. Um, and sometimes it's a matter of just surgically removing them. We freeze them, we burn them off, we do a whole bunch of things and we leave a little wart. And that being that it's supposed to stimulate the immune system to fight off anything uh, else. So it's kind of like a natural vaccine then. Right. You'd irritate it, the viruses get an immune response and then it prevents others from forming and then also attacking the, the ones the that, are there. that are there. Yeah, so you're hoping that you're internally stimulating the immune system to fight it off. And, uh, but it takes time, you know, so we can remove it. We're going to have some, some wounds that need to heal, but we're also going to have to take time to let the body heal those up. Yeah, so at least a month ahead of the, the fair or wherever you're going to show that animal, we yeah. need to get after it and try to get it done. That's for skin ones. Now, you know. penile warts. So penile warts, bulls, reproductive exam, breeding soundness exams in the spring. Um, very common to notice warts in young bulls. Most of them will resolve on their own as their immunity develops, okay? but. If they test a bull and they see a, a wart, um, certainly anything on that wart when he tries to breed could cause bleeding. Bleeding's not gonna allow him to get have a successful uh, pregnancy because that's gonna hinder it. So then we'll possibly talk about taking that wart off if it doesn't go away on its own. And um, again, planning ahead. We usually try to take these off, uh, remove the wart, check them two weeks, make sure it's gone, okay? Some of them are really persistent and uh, they don't want to go away um, so a lot of times you know we'll see these we have to treat multiple times you know before they go and uh, but again planning for at least a, at least a month and a half to get this stuff cleared up 60 days prior to or at least a month prior to breeding season this thing needs to be cleared up you know and those kind of things so and so, you probably take those off the same way excise them or or, yep. or so, uh, freeze them surgery freezing we do some laser therapy in the clinic you know, so some of those kind of things. And uh, so there's multiple ways to try. And depending on the strain, sometimes they're a little difficult to get gone. So we need to plan ahead. Ever vaccine, uh, or ever vaccinate in the face of, of uh, uh, RA having warts? Yep, we do that too. Um, you know, just trying to see if we can stimulate it. Uh, but usually that strain is going to be fairly specific. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's take a break and then we'll switch gears to something uh, a little more itchy. Sure. Ringworm. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. Dr. Matt Meisner, Dr. Dan Thompson, more after these messages. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. If my calves start healthy and stay healthy, I've got a good shot at making money. That is why I trust Clostrix. It gives my calves the protection they need until their own immune systems kick in. Calf raisers trust Colostrix Colostrum Supplements. Colostrix is USDA licensed and proven effective. When your money is on the line, trust Colostrix. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner, who is an associate professor and the section head of livestock services, our, our practice here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, does a lot of work teaching, is nationally acclaimed, and, and does a lot of speaking out there at veterinary meetings. Uh, glad to have you on the show, grab you out of the, right when he's heading out of the, the clinics in the truck to go work on a case. Uh, said, hey, you mind shooting this real quick? But anyway, um, ringworm. Yeah, another fun one. And I apologize. Yeah, I didn't have time to go through makeup and hair today, so uh, <laughs> um, not a big deal. Um, ringworm's another one of those skin problems. And when we had we talked a little bit in the past about warts and ringworm, um, 
it's a name of worm, but it's actually a fungus. Okay, um, and it can sometimes look like warts because sometimes it gets kind of a crusty surface to it, you know. So, uh, but ringworm is actually not a worm; it's a fungus, and it's a contagious fungus. It's another one of those skin things that'll keep you out of the fair um, because they don't want to have that type of a, of, a, of a contaminant in the environment or on other animals to to create other problems. Mainly contagious cattle to cattle, but there could be some issues you know, where it could be zoonotic, right? right. Or, or from cattle to people. Yeah, so, sure. I mean, it can go from critter to critter, um, and from critter to post to critter. Um, it can go critter to you to critter. And it can go, some species of ringworm in, in animals can be transmitted to people to cause clinical problems, some, some severe itching and other things. And some people are more susceptible to it than others. But um, ringworm, you know, some of this, are, again, a bunch of different species of ringworm. Um, and uh, a lot of them are, species specific in cows generally get cow types and goats and cats and but um, some of those species are certainly zoonotic to you well, too. I've had clients come in and had ringworm on a cat and then you look at their arms and yeah just it's on their arms or wherever they're holding that cat yeah just, um, <laughs> just be careful yeah it's not pretty <laughs> um, and then uh, you know there's you said there's no vaccines for this. Right, so unlike the warts or other skin things where we're, we've got a, a typical virus, um, a fungal type situations like this, there's really no preventive um, mechanism like a vaccine for it. Um, it's just, it's one of those things, you either clear it or we treat it and take care of it. So they're picking it up where? In the environment, and so again, usually it's an, an animal that's had it, they're carrying it, they're, they're contaminating the environment with it, and it can, it can reside in various areas as long as it's in the right environment it can it can last and an animal can rub up against a post or a gate or anything and manage to get it to, in, in that situation too. So we're going to look at at uh, you know prevention basically is going to be if you have an animal you're going to isolate it and then the rest of it's taking care of the environment and making sure that that we get it cleaned up. Sure yeah you'd want to I mean, you know a lot of areas will be self cleaning and get sunlight and those kind of things, but moist, dark areas and, and a bunch of crevices can hold it and, and then you got to be careful with that kind of a thing. You think about some of the show cattle that we keep in inside or keep them in cooler boxes, uh, things of that nature, yeah. we might want to disinfect or scrub down those cooler boxes. Right, yeah, yeah, those kind of things. And then, again, be careful with on, on those, um, but moist, dark areas and Wear gloves. Wear gloves. All right. Let's take a break. Folks, you're watching Doc Talk. Dr. Matt Meisner here. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to treat ringworm after these messages. Did you know long-range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? To successfully pass on cattle operations from one generation to the next, it's important to promote beef and keep farms and ranches profitable. Your beef checkoff helps do that. I'm Tom Perrier. Our ranch is called Dale Banks Angus. Dale Banks is not a person, but it's a place. Uh, this ranch was started by my uh, great-grandfather. He came from Northwest England, and his farm there was called Dale Banks, and so he called his ranch here in the Flint Hills Dale Banks. The beef checkoff today has fulfilled a lot of needs that our industry has had over the years. Uh, we were very involved in trying to get the beef checkoff passed back in the 70s and early 80s because we saw the need then and the beef checkoff I think has fulfilled a lot of those things. I think some of the, the biggest bonuses that we've gotten from the beef checkoff in the last 20 years have been twofold, both in the research uh, phase of the industry, one being the Beef Quality Assurance Program that showed us just how much money we could capture by simply doing things like moving the injection sites from the hip and, and rump of the animal up to the neck where we had less high-valued cuts. That drove millions of dollars into our industry. The other thing that our beef industry did about 15 years ago was uh, embark on new product development, things like the flat iron steak and things that used to get ground into hamburger and low, other low-valued cuts today are sold for a premium. And that too, just like the Beef Quality Assurance Program, has driven uh, huge dollars into our industry that we all get to share. Matt's the primary 
uh, driver behind the operation right now. And, uh, he's the sixth generation and his children will be the seventh generation. I hope our kids are better at telling our beef industry's story. I think the last several years the Beef Checkoff has shown us how to do that better. They've given us some tools to do that. So we need to do a better job of telling the wonderful story that we have and I hope our kids can continue to do that. It's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Inc. knows the importance of beef quality assurance and asks you to step up and get certified. Go to bqa.org for details. Parasites will lose you more money than any other disease out there besides infertility. So, you know, parasites is something that we have to control and that's what Vet Gun does for us. It's tough out there on a the ranch, but with the ease of the vet gun, it's a one-man operation. And whenever you can get one thing to work out great throughout that day, it just makes my life a little easier. Still using ineffective fly tags on your cattle? It's time to eliminate fleas, ticks, flies, lice, and parasites. And at the same time, give them a shiny coat, making them more valuable. One fly tag can cost $2.50, but you can do this all for about a nickel a head. Introducing the Cow Sprayer, designed and built in the U.S. The Cow Sprayer is portable, solar-powered, and comes with a 25 or 40-gallon tank. Eliminate parasites for about five cents a head with the Cow Sprayer. Cowsprayer.com this segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm here with Dr. Matt Meisner, who's an associate professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences and the section head of the Livestock Veterinary Services here at Kansas State's Veterinary Health Center. We're talking about ringworm and the fungus among us and, and you know, when we get dogs and cats and people that you know we can use some not just topical things but we can actually treat them with with antifungals systemic antifungals and that we don't do that much in beef cattle don't do it much in cattle and and the reason being is it's a fairly expensive um being ruminants it's hard to get the volume that you'd want into them to be uh, effective against treating these kind of things and uh so it in almost all situations it's not really practical or, or or and we don't even really know how effective it is in some of these to give drug like Grecia fulvin is the drug that a lot of people would get or a cat might get or something but um, not going to be not going to be something we pick off the shelf well, really readily and we're eating these animals yeah and so right. you know withdrawals and things like that and and some of these products but uh, so so when you start to think about well I'll go get my veterinarian to give me something that's internal that I, you know, we had a cat and we gave it this and it dried it up. Probably not going to be the same. And a lot, yeah. lot different decision process in that, and uh, not just cost. You know, so again, effective cost, withdrawal times, those kind of things. So systemic treatment is pretty, pretty, pretty unlikely. And that's really some of those drugs are really the only ones that are proven. You know, there's some. Um, theoretical treatments with iodides and iodines and other treatments that have really not been proven um, certainly have their own side effects um, that, that, that have been attempted but really not proven. The only things that you can really do for these are treat them topically, clean them, betadine type things and, and sun drying. You know there's okay. there's been a bunch of witch magic out there with uh, flower treatments. Uh, I'm not going to mention names on these because it's not right but there's been some things that um, diesel solvents and a bunch of different things to try to dry these out that have been tried again not proven um, and maybe more irritating than than good um, but uh, there's a bunch of ringworm is it creates a bunch of desperation because it's a hard one to get rid of and so and i think that you know the other thing is as you mentioned earlier fungus or ringworm in humans versus cats versus dog and cattle can all be different yeah. and so trying to buy over-the-counter stuff for humans isn't going to probably work on cattle. Again, getting back to iodine, scrub, cleaning it, and getting it out in the sunshine and, yeah. and drying them out. Yeah. 
a lot of them self-resolve? Yeah, a lot of them will clear up on their own. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the individual's immune system. You know, some people are more susceptible to it. Some cattle are, are having trouble getting rid of it, and it has to do with just some of their, their immune or ability to, to fight it off on their own. And so that's, that's something we kind of keep in the back of our mind as well. Wow. It's been a great show. I always appreciate you coming on and, and spending time with us. And, you know, anything else on ringworm or warts or? No, I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's frustrating. And, I, and I, I feel the pain of the producer a lot of times when we're trying to get these things cleared up. And it's just, uh, it, can be a, it can be a lot of work to get them gone. Make sure you plan ahead. Make sure you work with your local practitioner. Uh, and if you want to know more about what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner. We're at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and we'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.